So I will be recording this. And thank you everybody for coming. And this is Karen Garland. And I can't remember, what, is it Lori, right? Yes. yes. But I don't remember her last name. <laughs> McGuire. Okay. And they're going to tell us all that we need to know about the RTA. And we appreciate them coming today. Thank you. No problem, Miss Tammy. Anything for you? Oh, that's I'm writing that down too. <laughs> I, ju I just told I just told Lori I can't say no to certain people, so you're on that list apparently. Oh, even though you hate Zoom, right? Even though I hate it. Morning, everybody. Good morning. I'll start. I'll start with just a couple fun, interesting facts. Um, yeah, there's um. I just happened to see him because he waved. A <laughs> couple interesting facts. Public transportation actually started in Allen County in 1878. That's a long time. And it actually started out, of course, with horse and buggy because that was the way of the world then. Um, actually, and then it converted uh, to electric power, little mini street cars, what they were called, um, went through several owners. It actually became Allen County Regional Transit Authority in 1976. And there obviously were not near the buses nor the size of. In 1977, RTA actually left the city limits for the first time and started began to service Elida. And then we've grown to where we are today. We are currently serving all of Allen County in one way or the other. We have multiple fixed routes that I'm gonna I'll let Lori let tell everybody where all we cover on our fixed routes. Fixed routes are our big bus service that the public just flags a bus down and hops on to go where they need to go. Lori will talk about fixed routes. We currently have nine <coughs> fixed routes and we run from 5.50 in the morning until 10.15 at night. Um, these nine routes go all over Allen County. You can get almost anywhere in Allen County on these fixed route buses. Um, elderly and disabled can ride for 50 cents. Um, general population can ride for a dollar. And we, we service both Walmarts. We go all the way to BioLife on the west side of town. Um, out north, we go as far as the prison. Um, on the east side of town, we go as far as the OSU campus. On the south side of town, we go as far as 9th Street over by the clinic over there. Um, actually, we actually go further than that. Now our new route goes all the way to PTC. So we, and anywhere in between. So anything you can think of in between those furthest out points, we can get you there. Um, for the, those that are not uh, capable of riding the fixed route bus for whatever reason, um, accessibility or a disability, either way, we have our uplift program, which is also geared towards elderly and disabled to help people get door to door service rather than having to go out and flag a bus when they're not capable of doing that or safely. Um, our uplift services require an application process. Um, I do review those applications and determine who's eligible. Sometimes it requires just some training to go out and learn how to ride a bus. Some people are just scared to learn how to ride the bus. So we also offer that. Um, you can call our my office anytime and we can set that up for anybody who's willing and wanting to learn how to ride a bus. We'll just go out and ride around until the individual is comfortable and they can do it on their own. Um, teach them how to exchange fare, how to use a transfer, how to read the, the maps and find out which route they need to get on to get where they're going, uh, that type of thing. Um, in 2011, 
we actually started our services for Miramar, where we contracted in. Uh, originally, we had, I believe, six Miramar routes where we picked individuals up from home and brought them into the workshop and the school also. Um, and then, of course, as you know, when you all separated, we kind of had to redo some things, but we still do service Miramar. We still currently have three routes um, that the uplift vans go door to door and pick folks up in Delphus and Bluffton and Elida. We go to Herrick. Uh, we're even going as far as Waynesfield now and bringing people in. Uh, we have a young lady that goes to Artability from Waynesfield. Um, we did service Spencerville for a time. Um, we currently do not have any individuals from Spencerville, but that's not out of the question. Um, and everywhere in between, Shawnee, Perry, Bath, everywhere. Um, we do some school routes. We, we contract with some schools and take some disabled children to and from school. Um, Pretty much anybody that needs to get anywhere, we will find a way to do it. <laughs> awesome. If I'm out, if I'm in Lima and I see a bus come and I can just like wave, like, hey, I need to get Yes, out. you just wave. We currently do. The county is so small that we don't have designated bus stops. If a person is standing out on the sidewalk and waves, shines a light, they use multiple modes. The but as long as it's safe, the bus is going to pull over and let you in. Um, one thing we do not do that I think is very important: we do not do opposite side of the road pickup. You have to be on the side of the road the bus is coming down. We will not stop for someone to cross the street. It's not safe for the individuals crossing and or anybody else. So if you flag a bus down that's coming the opposite direction, they will not stop. You will have to wait till they come back around and you're on the correct side of the road to actually enter that bus. So like how long would it be before the bus came back? Like how long would I have to wait? It depends on where you're at. Our bus, our routes are 50 minutes. So obviously if you're in a location that say the bus is 10 minutes into the route, you're probably going to stand there and wait 20 or 25 minutes till the bus is coming back through the correct side of the road. Um, and we do have two half hour routes, so the wait time may be a little less, but just know if you're not on the correct side of the street, you're going to probably wait 20, 25 minutes for that bus to come back through. Okay. And as Lori said, I think it's very important because most people do not know that we do have a training program for individuals that want to learn to ride the bus, that are either scared, whatever the issue. And I think that's a lot of it is people are a little fearful, like, oh my gosh, what if I don't get on the right bus? What if I don't know how to, when we get to the station, get on the next bus? So Lori is our current trainer. We really need, we'll probably have more than one of us eventually training. And once they're at the station, anybody that works here will help somebody to ensure they get on the right bus to where they're headed. So for the training, um, you would either do an individual or even like if it was like if there's three people that live in one home, you would do like the all three people at the same time. That would be okay Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Okay. And, it, and, and if one of the three needed a little more than the other two, then we just continue on with the one. We we understand that everybody is not on the same level Any in the public in general. We get lots of questions from the public. And if I'm going here, which bus do I need to get on? Mm -hmm. Again, anybody here is willing to assist in that situation. So even if I got on the bus 
And I said, well, you're, you're not going as far as I want to go, but here's where I want to go. That bus driver would say, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you off here. And then you're going to get the next bus. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Or if you get on a bus here and you want to go Walmart at Eastgate and the bus you accidentally get on is actually going the opposite direction, that driver is going to tell you, hold on and I'll get you on the bus that goes where you're trying to go. Okay. We do, run into a lot of that. Do all buses go back to the station every yes. route, like during the route? Yes. Our 50 minute routes, they leave the station at 10 minutes till the hour. They're typically back in the station after their route at 40 after. Then they do the same circle again at 50 after. But every bus hourly and or half hour, because again, we do have a couple half hour routes, come into the station before their next run. And we're, we're a little different than big major cities. We have one station, not multiple. And how many buses do you have? We have nine fixed routes that go out every day. Um, and we currently run seven to 10 uplift routes a day. <laughs> And again, the uplift TV is door to door. Our vehicle pulls up in front of someone's house and they come out and get on the bus. And if, if they need assistance, our driver is required to leave the bus and go to the door. We don't go through the door, we go to the door. So if somebody needs the uplift service, we would just call you and say, we need a ride. Yes, after, again, Lori kind of touched on the uplift application. Mm -hmm. Once an uplift application has been approved, then absolutely you call RTA, tell them I need to go so-and-so place. I need to be there at a certain time, which is not always the case. Um, we do a lot of medical transport, a lot of people going back and forth to work. If an individual is just going, let's say, to Walmart shopping, we ensure that our people that have actual appointments are getting where they belong first and on time. And then we'll take and drop somebody off at Walmart or wherever. And once you're approved for uplift, and most people don't know this, you don't have to be going to the doctor or the grocery or to work. We take people that go meet their friends and play poker once a week. It's bingo. We take people that go <laughs> play bingo at different times. So it's literally so that you can work, school, leisure, whatever the case may be, we really do it all. Does Uplift have the same times? It's from yes. 6.50? We operate from 5.50 a.m. to 10.15 p.m. on Uplift also. Okay. We do, it's it's a little different than just calling like like a taxi service. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we, we prepare the routes for the next day, the previous day. So we like to know the previous day who all needs a, a ride for the next day. Then we create the routes and prepare them so that we kind of the drivers have a tablet and the tablet loads with all the trips they have for the day. So when they get here for their shift, they get their tablet. And whatever generates on that tablet is who they're picking up throughout the day. They don't necessarily come back to the station every hour like fixed route does. They're just out and about all day long. And how many uplift buses do you have? Um, we run about seven to 10 routes a day, just depending on how, how busy we are. Okay. And we have vehicles for more routes. Oh, yeah. We have several. And, but... Yeah, we have more than we have more vehicles than what we actually send out daily. It's just what we send out daily is where the need is. Okay. And how about how many people use your the RTA on a daily basis? Do like you, total? Yeah. Um, oh, I can't answer the uplift. That one will be you. Um, I would say, uh, 
I'm not holding you to that number. You can just. <laughs> okay, gonna, right. No, you don't get a grade on it. <laughs> I'm going to get. I'm going. I'm going to say we transport about fifty to sixty individuals through our contract services, and our uplift clients' general population is probably ten to twenty a day. Oh, and we um, and we. Probably on average fixed route. And again, I'm going to have to use a woo ballpark average only because of the way of the world right now. And it depends on the time of month. Um, first week of the month, it can be six or 700 people in a week. That's not uncommon. Oh, wow. And then when you get obviously third, fourth week of the month, you might get less. I would say on average, we're at probably at least 500 a week. Yeah. Oh, wow. And probably closer to the 700 average. Yes. Um, the Art Ability crew would like to know if the big bus is handicap accessible. All of our vehicles are ADA handicapped accessible. Yes. Okay. Every We do not have a vehicle in our fleet that is not handicap accessible. That's good to know. Does anybody else have questions? I'm kind of hogging up the whole thing. You're good. We also offer special services. And again, that has to be scheduled. Um, it's not free, obviously, because if we did stuff for free, we wouldn't be able to keep our doors open. We do field trips. We do all kinds of special services. And again, that has to... Um, be pre-scheduled we need way more than a day notice on that because we have to obviously have driver availability and if it's an all-day event then we know that driver is out all day and i just seen emily's question and the answer is we do still have the trolley and yes we still take the trolley out yes and that's the that's the most requested vehicle for events Really? Is the trolley. It's an original trolley. Not originally was used here, but it is an original trolley that was used for public transportation. And we've had it restored. And yes, and we take, we go out with the trolley to multiple events throughout the area. Um, we're always at Lima City Schools back to school and we just take it out there. Obviously, that's not a cost. We take it so kids can get on and off. And it's really neat to see. We have it at the Christmas tree festival. So we're out with the trolley as much as we can be just to be out and about with it. How many can fit on the trolley? Oh, that one's tough. 25-ish. Wow. We use it for parades. If we ever get parades again, we typically take the trolley out during the parades. Um, the trolley does both. <laughs> Emily, it does both. That is so fun. It is fun. And that vehicle is fun. And kids get super excited when they oh. see the trolley and they want to get in it. And so, yeah, it's amazing. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's right, Christine. She said um, she will consider the RTA for special events, and it'll be a great way to get multiple homes together for day trips. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yep. And again, we, we like taking the trolley out as much as people out and about like seeing it. It's fun. That is fun. And that goes that you would take the trolley all around Allen County? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. We, we last, was it? No, probably not last summer, just because everything was canceled. We took it to Bluffton during their farmer's market. Um, we literally have took that trolley a little bit of everywhere. It's a real popular for weddings. Oh, yeah. People call, we 
we will rent it out for that. We obviously rent the vehicle and a driver to go with it. We can't just let anybody drive them, but oh yeah, we use it a lot. Are hired services limited to Allen County only? In the trolley, only because it would be, we would be, I'm not sure that I want to go anywhere on the highway a long distance in the trolley. But the answer to other trips via bus is no. We um, have transported locos for years um, and the warriors, we take the locos to Canada every year. So yeah, we literally go out of the country, not just out of the county. Wow. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have questions? Seth, they have to turn your mic on. Your mic's not on. Seth can probably tell you as much about RTA as we can. Angie, turn your mic on so we can hear. <laughs> you said you missed them taking you to the R? Yes. Ah, Seth, Seth misses writing the RTA. Oh, we miss you too, Seth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Seth, is it easy to ride? Yeah. Yeah. It's That's easy to figure good. out. You missed the good. Oh, you missed the arc. Yeah. Do you have to have exact change getting on the RTA? Exact change. Yeah, the drivers don't carry change. And how much was that again, the RTA? The, the big fixed route buses are... 50 cents for elderly and disabled, $1 for general population. Um, the uplift vans for uplift approved individuals is $2 each way. Do you have a photo of the trolley? I do, Tammy, can I send it? To, I'll send it to you. Can you distribute it? I can. Yep, I'll get it sent out to you this early, later this morning. Okay. Absolutely. Good. If you'll share it. Absolutely. I'm excited. I hope we have parades pretty soon so we can see. Yeah, me, <laughs> girl, us too. We also have vehicles down at Throat Park for the July 4th event. And um, we take the trolley down there, obviously. So, and if I see Emily from Artability, it's they're excited to see the trolley again. If you want us to bring the trolley to your site, just call it, give us some advance notice, a little more than a day or two. Um, and a driver will drive the trolley to your site for people to see it. Now, does that cost? That does not cost. If we're actually going somewhere with folks, then there is a cost. But for one of us to come to a site, no. Awesome. That would be a fun idea. Maybe go to you like one pod and then around to the other side of the building for the rest of them. Yeah, that's exciting. That'd give Brian something to do. Good idea, Emily. <laughs> and it's getting so nice out. Right that it would be exactly, they could come out and actually see the trolley and absolutely. Does anybody else have questions? No, I don't. I don't know. Did you, did you learn anything? Yes, we did. Good. Tammy, did you learn anything? Me? <laughs> I wrote down some notes. I learned a lot. I might have to come out for training. Come on, girl. Because I, 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 mean, I need some help. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised, seriously, the public that comes in that, again, is kind of scary if you've never done it. It is. I get nervous trying new things. So and, I would like a little bit of help. Right. And I know I've been to some big cities 
And now I try to, everywhere I go, ride public transportation. And oh, it's scary. It's really scary in big cities. So I get the scare factor trying to ride public transportation because it's scary for uh, initially. So what about people that can't see? So like, do you call out like where you're at? Yes, that's, that's an ADA regulation. And we actually have enunciators that do that. They announce the major points, um, major locations that we're at or, and turns. Let's say we're on Allentown Road, we're going to turn on cable. The enunciator announces that. That we're, enunciator is the bus driver or? It's no, a it's a electronic yeah. device. Yeah, oh. we have set up per vehicle per route. So it knows what route that it's on. And if that happen, does not work, then the driver is required to announce the exact same things that the enunciator would announce. Okay. Good to know. Do you guys require your riders to wear seatbelts? We do not. Not in fixed route now with that uplift, being uplift is required here's the reason fixed route buses do not all have every seat does not have a seat belt so based by on rule we cannot require some and not others to wear a seat belt all of our uplift vehicles has a seat belt in every seat so the individuals on the uplift vehicles are required to wear their seat belt and the driver is always required, no matter what vehicle. Are there other questions? No. Well, thank you, Karen and Lori, for your time and telling us all about the RTA. I really learned a lot, and I'm excited to come out and learn and get come, my in, come and see us tammy and i will get the trolley to you a picture of the trolley to you okay and if anybody's interested in us just bringing the trolley for an event give us a call that's wonderful okay well thank you everybody for coming thank you guys for your time thank you tammy everybody have a great day you too thanks yeah bye bye bye, -bye.